Hey everyone, my name is Phil Dobbinspeck and I'm the Executive Director at West Sound Youth for Christ. Thank you so much for pressing play on this video. We look forward to sharing uh, stories of hope and transformation in the lives of young people across our community with you. Uh, the clips that you're about to watch and the interviews that took place all happened at an event called An Evening with YFC. That event was broadcast live, and what we've done is shortened out some of the different clips that didn't make sense for you to play since you're not able to watch it live with us. So we've shortened down the content, given you the meat and potatoes. We hope that you will watch till the end and hear and learn all about what God is doing across our community. Thank you so much. This thrilling rush, electrifying air, eyes open wide to take this moment in, we're carefree like the wind, awakening within, we wanna see that wonder never end, it's what our hearts beat for. Christ, and we're just going to have a conversation about camp. Thanks yeah. for joining us, Julianne. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So camp is one week. Mm -hmm. Youth for Christ is about deep relationships with kids. Yes. How does that happen in just one short week at camp? So that's a, that's a great question. So we meet kids here um, at the teen center, and um, we might see them a couple times a week, maybe every so often. But when we go to camp, we're around each other the whole time, for 24 hours a day, for four or five days. And um, I know lots of us have had a staycation with some people in our homes. And so you know, you get to see the good and the not so fun um, when you're with people. And so it's just a great opportunity to create some shared experiences together. We do some really fun stuff, but then we get to have some really good conversations. And so 
cabin time is really some of the best time where we hear, we hear a message and then we get the opportunity to just talk about who God is and um, things that are going on in our lives. And it's just, it's really, really great time to just be removed from all the distractions of day-to-day life. Yeah, like a focused, condensed time of relationship building, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Great. So tonight we're here with our friends in the room and everybody watching online, and mm-hmm. we're holding this fundraiser. So tell everyone why is fundraising important for camp? So if you have planned a vacation anytime recently, things aren't, things aren't free anymore. Were they ever? I don't know if they were ever, but I mean, when I was a kid, they were free because my parents just paid for it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Hi, Mom. Um, congratulations on the coffee basket, by the way. Um, but uh, things cost money, and those experiences cost money. So, um, and there's like insurance and all these things like that go into paying for these experiences, high ropes, all of these things um, that we want to give these kids these opportunities that they might not normally get a chance to do. But their family might be focusing on trying to just keep a roof over their head, keep food on the table. And so, um, yes, some of that, some of that cost that, that, comes, that comes with camp is covered, but sometimes kids don't get a chance to do that. And so it's just one of those barriers that we want to remove so that all kids have an opportunity to go and create some memories, but also um, hear the good news. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's yeah. great. And and every kid should have that opportunity, even if they're coming from a family that wouldn't otherwise normally be able to afford it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Julianne, for coming up here and talking with me Absolutely. and sharing with everyone. I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was homeless, and you gave me a room. I was shivering, and you gave me clothes. I was sick, and you stopped to visit. I was in juvenile detention, and you came to me. There are over 30,000 11 to 19 year olds here in Kitsap and North Mason. Many of them are overlooked and unaware of the hope found in Christ. Every day, real kids with a story to share wander and search for belonging. Some turn to drugs and alcohol to numb the pain in their lives. Some turn to violence and are arrested each year. Some end up pregnant and have babies. And suicide has become the second leading cause of death among teens. Youth for Christ knows the story doesn't end there. Thankfully, God gave YFC opportunities to interrupt the lives of 11 to 19 year olds in our community with good news. Over the past 38 years, YFC has been reaching young people on school campuses, in juvenile detention centers, through large events, social service programs, and by mentoring young parents. We continue to adapt to the current generation and their needs to give life to their story. From Olaula to Hansville, Belfair to Bain Bridge, the mission is to build relationships with kids, 2,000 authentic, Christ-sharing relationships every single year. Relationships that build stronger communities where Jesus is the connection point between our story and a kid's story. Consider for a moment how God wants to give life to your story. We know it will take hundreds of ministry partners to reach 2,000 kids. YFC is growing and expanding, meeting new kids every day. Now imagine the thousands of kids we haven't met yet. Imagine knowing your involvement can make the difference in just one of those lives. The need is clear. In order to reach 2,000 kids this year, 
We start with God and invite you to serve, to give, to inspire, to engage, to reach young people everywhere. We are Youth for Christ. Well, I'm joined right now with Adam Smith, the West Sound Youth for Christ Development Director. And Adam, 30,000 young people ages 11 to 19. That's a big number. It is a big number. How, what um, do you think about my when you think about, on. we got it now? I think we <laughs> got it. Good. Which way is mute? There's an arrow yeah, and a mute like, button uh, and it is confusing. So 30,000, it's a big number number. What do you think about when you think about how do we go about making an impact in that big of a number? Yeah, I, I, I think it's, uh, it takes effort, but it's simple. Um, at some level, I'm only sitting here because someone back in 1994 named Steve Blacksmith reached out to me through basketball. And um, I got to go to a camp and I got to um, participate and, and learn from people. And that's basically what we're doing here at YFC is we uh, we're sitting in our mothership, if you will, right? We have a, uh, an amazing teen center downstairs. And um, recently, the way the, the um, rules have been, we've been able to reopen under a new name called the 801. And so we're open Mondays and Wednesdays for local teens uh, here, attend Bremerton High School, Mountain View Middle School to come and uh, participate in what we have going on. Very cool, very cool. And we were talking earlier this week, and there's some um, pretty great opportunities, even in this time of shutdowns and COVID and restrictions, there's some great growth opportunities going on. Uh, tell us about what some of that is. Yeah, so we have an amazing partnership um, with North Point Church up in Paulsbo. They have this property that sits right out front, and they're located right by the high school and right by the middle school. And this property, we started dreaming about it, um, and we are in the process of um, basically bringing that building to life and uh, creating a new teen center in the North Kitsap community for kids to be able to drop into, you know, um, play games, get into programming, uh, get on uh, online, play video games. We have a cafe planned on being in there. But ultimately, it's a safe space for kids to belong and um, to get connected with positive adult mentors. Wow, very cool. So the impact that's happening here in this building the 801, being able to replicate that even in the time of COVID. That's pretty amazing. That's very cool. Yeah, we're running things like um, art classes, for example. I have an animation degree, and one of the things that is really cool is when you can show up and draw Batman for a kid or SpongeBob. It's like a magic show, right? So being able to pull out high school students, middle school students, and show them how to draw and improve and use their creative capacity has been really cool. And we're working towards things like leadership classes, uh, life skills classes, and other things like that that can really uh, benefit a student and allow them to connect with people. Yeah, very cool. Adam, thank you so much for joining us and sharing a little bit. So the very first time I ever heard about YFC, I had met Phil Dobbins Beck at church and um, I had moved out of Belfair, and so he was asking me if I knew of anybody that might want to volunteer for a campus life program in Belfair. I started volunteering um, when he asked that, and I think that was back at the very end of 2009. I think what I like most about Youth for Christ is that they actually go to the places that the kids are. Um, you know, being in ministry within a church body is amazing, but there is that um, gap. And, you know, we wait for kids to come to us typically in the church where um, YFC is that bridge. We go to where the kids are and build relationships there and then everything goes good and we bring them into a church. I think more than anything, what young people need today is Jesus. And I know that seems like a like a basic answer, but I think that it really gets to the heart of everything is when they know Jesus, then they, um, they can learn who they are. They can have a purpose in life and not have to create something for themselves by being a part of something that's unhealthy for them. Um, and I think that the only way they can do that is through relationships with people. And so um, they need relationships with people who can lead them to Jesus. 
feet up and cry. It's life transforming when you can come in and build a relationship with a student, um, share Christ with them, and then see their life changed forever. Um, and my time in YFC, I was actually during camps, I had different girls in my cabins and believe it or not, um, both of my sons are married to those girls that were in my cabin that I was able to lead to Christ. And now they, their life has changed forever. They're a part of my family. And, um, it's irreplaceable. You just, you can't, you can't replace relationship with anything else. And so loving them right where they're at, at the time that they're at, whatever they're doing in their life and knowing that they're valuable and that they're worth your time and that they're worth your love. Um, you just can't replace that because unfortunately they don't always get that at home. In fact, I would hate to say, but more times than not, um, kids don't. Love seems to be conditional in a lot of homes. And so offering that is irreplaceable. So I started supporting YFC financially when I actually was in ministry um, as a campus life director. And I had to leave because I had to take care of my family and things um, came about. But the reason I continue to support YFC is because I still believe in the mission of YFC. And I know what it's like when you need funding to be able to, um, make ministry happen you know everything costs money unfortunately and so to really make ministry happen you have to have the funding and it also allows me to continue to be a part of the ministry even if i don't know the kids that are coming in the teen center or i'm not on campus anymore i still know that i'm connected and i'm making a difference this ministry, any ministry, but this ministry is a spiritual battle and the lives of these students are at stake. The eternal lives of these students are at stake. And so as a donor, yes, your money is important to make ministry happen, but also to know that along with those dollar bills that are going out, that your prayers that are going out for those students are making a difference. They're making a huge difference because there is power in prayer. And I think sometimes knowing that that money is going out of your account every month, it, it, it reminds you even in the busyness of my own life to be like, yes, Lord, okay, I'm gonna pray for these students, this money to go out and that it will make a difference and that these lives will be changed. Um, and then if that wasn't, if I wasn't seeing that, it would be like I wouldn't have that reminder necessarily um, that that is my obligation to be praying for these students and for the ministry directors that um, are meeting these kids where they're at. Well, I am joined now with Brandy. Brandy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And... A uh, first question, you talked about it in the video, but maybe a little bit more, how did you arrive at the decision to become a financial partner with YFC? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, I think it wasn't necessarily an easy process, I would say. Um, we came from a single family income, and I had just, I was working very part-time for YFC, but as part of the ministry, it's part of our job to fundraise, to make ministry happen. And as I was um, in a Bible study actually learning about what it means to raise money and how that is a part of doing the ministry, God really convicted me to say, if you aren't put your money where your mouth is, basically, you know, if you're out here doing it and that's great, but are you fully 100% invested? Because I think a lot of times our money controls us. And, you know, it's very scriptural that we, we give. And so, um, after talking it over with my husband, you know, we started what we could afford at the time and small and, and have increased it, you know, over time. But yeah, I, I didn't feel like I could ask somebody else to give if I wasn't. Yeah. That's good. Thank you so much. Yeah. So now you've been giving for some time. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe share with everyone, what are some ways that um, being a, a, a giver, being a Youth for Christ financial partner has impacted your relationship with God and, and your faith? 
again, I think that um, in this world we live in, in this crazy world we live in, that money is such a huge factor. And um, I feel good to say that my husband and I do not allow money to control us. And so we have gotten to this place, and it didn't come overnight. It's been years and years of giving and watching God show up in our life when we're willing to surrender our finances. And it's been a huge process, but, you know, the seed in the sower is really what it comes down to. And so it's been awesome to watch God show up in our life time and time again, and it's created that spirit of giving within us where it's like, where can we give? What can we do, you know, more and more and more because... Um, because it's glorifying God and it's blessing the people that you're giving it to. And it also helps you stay connected to ministries that are doing the things that like I can't do right now, you know, and some people, maybe they never could go on a campus or volunteer in a teen center or have anything to do with teenagers for that matter. It takes a special gift. So the, the money aspect of it is a way to be involved and it has just grown us, I guess, our relationship with the Lord. We're like in that sweet spot of just really knowing and trusting him. And we wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. That is awesome. Thank you so much. My name is Zariah. Um, I like playing volleyball, I like getting out, being with family, very family oriented, being around friends and anything that involves being outdoors or new, meeting new people. Um, so I actually knew a leader that used to work here, his name is Ashley Robinson and I went to the Boys and Girls Club and he told me that he would be moving over here and I think I was in about 7th, 8th grade. And that's when I made the switch over here instead of Boys and Girls Club. Well, one time I went to this YFC, by, it was like a camp thing and we went to Oregon and Coach Ashley said something that really stuck to me. Like I have a few verses that I remember like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And that really stays with me because like I can accomplish anything no matter what anybody thinks about me. And that's kind of that mindset that you have to have because people are constantly gonna judge you. But if you keep your faith, then you shall prosper. Um, after school, almost every day, like Julianne would check in with me, ask me how I'm doing, if I need anything, and this is just a safe place I can come to to help me stay out of the streets or be doing bad things in this community. She's funny, like she's the funniest person I've ever met. And like sometimes it's hard to connect with adults, but when they are just that fun, interactive person, it's easier. Like she's honestly helped me get closer to God as well, read into the Bible, and also like to kind of stay out of the streets because we have a place like the 801 that we can come to after school. I feel like I can just be myself here without getting judged by the staff or other kids that are here. Well, Zariah's with us tonight, of course. Thanks for joining us, Zariah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so in the video, you talked about coming to the 801 and what that experience was like. Could you kind of tell us the story of your first time here and what you experienced? Yes, so when I first walked in, it was so welcoming. Like staff were like, oh my gosh, how is your day going? And students I've never talked to at school were trying to get closer to me and it was so surprising. It felt like home and I just had a community that actually cared about me. That sounds pretty awesome. So earlier this week we were talking and you were sharing with me a story about something that happened on social media that you were trying to figure out recently. Could you share that with everybody? Yes, so TikTok. Is that like your, your clock app or? I wish I could say it was that. Okay. <laughs> but I came across something on TikTok, like other social media platforms that interact and attract kids around my age that I didn't necessarily agree with and I didn't know if it would be right in God's eyes to look at it. And so I was able to come to the 801 and talk to my leader about it. And we dug deeper down inside to what the message was actually saying. And she helped me 
and I learned that it wasn't disobeying God if you're doing it in the right way, and that brought me joy knowing that I can come to somebody to talk about problems that can be deeper that necessarily I can't talk to somebody at home. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thanks. Okay, so the other thing we are talking about earlier this week is maybe sharing something that God is teaching you about in your life right now. Well, God has been teaching me a lot of things, but especially through quarantine, and that is to keep my faith. Because with all the stuff going on in the world right now, you can question God sometimes, like, why is this going on? What did you do? Like, why is this going on? But to always have your faith and know that he does everything for a reason has really helped me. That's awesome. And that's kind of inspirational to me, too. So thanks. Thank you. Um, Could we give Zariah a round of applause for just sharing? Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Phil, but I just want to say that as a, as a volunteer here tonight for Youth for Christ, and I, I love the ministry of YFC. I love what's happening here and getting to host, talking with young people and leaders. And so I just invite you as, you know, just Josh here with you guys tonight and you watching online to, to open your heart and ask and seek. Uh, how is God inviting you to be generous? How is he inviting you to be involved as Phil shares? So I'm going to turn it over to Phil Dobbinsbeck. Thanks, Josh. And thank you, Zariah, for sharing your story. Thank you. I know that can be scary to get in front of a room full of people and then there's a camera in your face and you don't know who you're talking to, just like me. Hi, everybody. Um, hey, thank you so much for being here again tonight. I'm so excited that we were able to host this event. Um, If you're like me, it just feels good to be around people tonight, for those of you in the room. And for those of you at home, it feels great to still be connected to you, even though you're not here. So we're doing things we never would have done a year ago, and uh, it's great to have everybody with us tonight. Um, I want to read a verse to you out of Matthew. Matthew chapter 25, um, Verses 35 through 40 says this, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you in? or naked and clothe you? And when do we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. A few years ago, I was able to go snorkeling. And uh, for those of you that don't know me, I love to be on the water, not under the water. And so um, I'm not a great swimmer, but I love to be on the water. I love to be out in boats and playing and doing lots of fun stuff. But being underwater is just not my favorite thing. I've also come to realize that I don't enjoy being upside down. So like I always want to do like these handstand push-ups, but I don't like being upside down. It's just not, it's just not comfortable for me. So so I go snorkeling, we sign up for this snorkeling class, and we're getting ready to go, and, and the instructor gives me some very clear instructions. He says these three things, at least this is what I remember him saying. Number one, take deep breaths. If you take shallow breaths, you're going to reuse the air in your snorkel tube, so take very deep, methodical breaths. Two, stay away from the beach. It's a protected sea area. So if you touch it, you'll get a ticket. So just don't go to the beach ever. Come back to the boat. And three, don't freak out, right? So three very simple instructions. And as we're talking, um, we, we put on the flippers, we put on the snorkel, we make sure everything masks, we're good to go, uh, different kind of masks than we're wearing today. Um, but we were all ready to go. We jumped in the boat, we went out, jumped in the water, 
And before I got in the water, I already couldn't breathe. I was freaking out in the boat as everybody else was jumping in. Then it's my turn. I jump in the water. I'm freaking out. This is me in the water, freaking out. And um, I'm so uncomfortable, right? They've got us in these wet, like all these things are like, don't worry, you can't sink. And I was like, try me, try me, okay? Um, so I'm in the water, I'm totally uncomfortable. And the first thing I do is start breathing really short breaths. <laughs> I'm freaking out. The next thing I do is what any logical human would do in that situation. And I try to get to the beach as fast as I could. I just started kicking my legs. It felt like I had swam a mile when the instructor whistles at me and tells me, hey, come back. You can't go that way. So I turn around, and in my head, I'm about to die, right? I, I'm not a good swimmer. These fins have given me way more confidence than I should have ever had in the water. And I'm going back to the boat where I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Jump on the boat? Like, we're supposed to be out here for like four hours, and I'm going to jump on this boat after 10 minutes. Get back. I'm, I'm, right? I can't calm down. I'm freaking out. The instructor says, come over here. Pull your mask off. And I was like, okay. He says, I told you that if you needed help to come talk to me, not on my top three list of things that I remember him saying. And I said, okay, okay, now that's coming back to my memory. And uh, he says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you this kickboard to hold on to. And I just want you to try it with that. And guys, I had this little kindergarten red kickboard that both my hands were on that I went for the whole rest of that snorkel tour kicking around because I had my hands on something that gave me balance. It gave me something to hold on to. It was bigger than me. When I was in the water by myself, it wasn't enough for me. I needed something, I needed something else to hold on to. Else to hold on to. And that's, to that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. The kids need kids something, else. something else to hold on to. When I hold on to that thing, literally, literally I cannot even explain it, but instantly I had this peace and calm that just came over my body. And I did. I went all over that thing. I started going underwater. I started doing all kinds of stuff because somebody had given me a tool, right? And on that tool, it clearly says, what? This is not a life-saving device. But that saved my life. At least that's how it felt. That not a life-saving device saved me. It made me able to stay in that water and swim around and hang out and have fun. Young people, oftentimes in our community, are drowning in the chaos of their lives. Life is so messy for kids right now. They need somebody to throw out a life preserver. They need somebody to hand them the kickboard to say, hey, guess what? I'm here to help you. If you're ever freaking out, just come and find me and I'll help you. I have things that can help you. I have the one who can help you. Just come to me. In Ephesians 2, uh, the message version of it, I love how it says this. Now, God has us where he wants us, with all the time in this world and the next, to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus. Saving is all his idea and all his work 
All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role. And if we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we'd done the entire thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and the saving. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he has gotten ready for us to do, work we had better be doing. I want to read that last sentence. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he has gotten us ready to do, work we had better be doing. He does the saving. There's no question. The Holy Spirit is at work in people's lives across our community. But our job is the good deeds, the good works, the things that help people. It's handing them the kickboard so that they can continue to float. It's having conversations to help provide kids with stuff that no one else is doing. Matthew 5.13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It'll be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp, then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. We have got prime examples of lights. You guys can't see them on camera, but we have lights everywhere in here on stands hanging over me because lights up above light up the room. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. We are called to be a light. We are called to do things for those who don't know Jesus, to learn their stories, to share our story, to begin to weave in the story of Jesus into their lives. At YFC, we want to be a place where kids can have healthy connections with adults. I want to share with you just a few statistics about young people today. A lot of people hear us talking about how kids are lonely or they feel isolated, and we often see kids on their phones all the time, and it doesn't make sense to us as adults, how somebody can be on that, their phone all the time and feel isolated. But here are some statistics. Nearly half of all Americans feel sometimes or always alone. One in four Americans rarely or never feel as though someone understands them. Gen Z, who are these young kids that we're working with, their numbers are higher than that national average. They push it up for all of us. They're so lonely. 66% of young people have three or fewer interactions on a daily basis that are meaningful. Three or more. Sixty-five percent. That's that's like with parents. Three or less meaningful experiences a day. We know that about thirty percent of kids in America have one or fewer trusted adults in their life. That includes their parents. That's any adult. One or fewer trusted adults in their lives. Young young people are asking faith questions. Zariah mentioned it here. She had a question about her faith. 
What does a kid do when they have questions about their faith, yet they have nobody that they're connected to to ask those questions to? What do they do when there's abuse happening and they have nobody that they're connected to to talk about it? What do they do when there's not enough food? What do they do when they need help with homework? What do they do with these things? It's our opportunity as the church to come in and say, here's a kickboard. We can help you. We want to help you. We've got tools for you. We're going to come alongside you because we want you to know who Jesus is and we want you to know what love is. Since the COVID-19 shutdown, nearly seven in 10 youth, seven in 10 youth report clinically significant depression symptoms. One in seven report that their suicidal thoughts have increased since the social distancing began. Guys, this is real stuff that kids in our community, kids that we have conversations with, are dealing with. We know that kids uh, between the ages of 14 and 24 have been affected disproportionately by the shutdowns across the country their lives have been completely uprooted. Any sense of community that they have has been lost. Band, you guys can come on up. We used to believe that young people, getting young people into a room with other young people automatically meant that those young people would feel connected, would feel like they had a place to belong. But what we've found through research, is that kids don't feel connected by showing up at all. There was research research done on kids going to church who felt like just because they went to church, they didn't belong and weren't connected. The thing that changed the statistics was having a meaningful relationship with an adult. When a kid had a meaningful relationship with an adult, their sense of belonging in church, their sense of belonging in any community went way up. Because young kids and kids in our community aren't looking for a big group to hang out in. They're looking for somebody to accept them. They're looking for a place to belong. They're looking for somebody to give them hope, for somebody to love them, Guys, we have an opportunity to be the kickboard to kids in our community. To say, hey, come on over. Come on over. Come to the 801. Come to the center in Paul's boat. Come to the parent life group. We want to help you. We want to give you the tools you need to be a successful life. And most importantly, we want to introduce you to Jesus who loves you and cares for you and has a plan for your life. James 2.17 says, So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It's dead and useless. And tonight I want to invite you to help us do more good deeds with young people in our community. Help us reach more kids. Our goal, like the video said, is 2,000 kids in authentic, real, deep, meaningful conversations and relationships with adults that lead those kids into into knowing who Jesus is them having the opportunity to say yes or no to him. So tonight, our goal is big. There's 30,000 kids in our community, like Zariah, like Devin, who comes to the center almost every day that it's open, just looking for somebody to love him, to care about him. And tonight, our goal 
this to raise $35,000 to reach more kids, to do more good deeds, to throw out the kickboard to kids in our community. So on the screen, we have a few suggested amounts that they just talk a little bit about what that money goes to do. And that, those are great, and it's true. That is what the money goes to do. But every dollar that you give goes to give kids a place to belong, to give kids hope, to give kids a sense of meaning and purpose, and to introduce kids to Jesus, who ultimately is the one who can transform their life. And so tonight, there's a real easy way for you to give. It's going to go on the screen. You just pull out your phones. You've been doing it all night. And there's a number up there. You're going to text GIVE to YFC to that number, 5625. And when you send a text to that, it's free. Sending the text is free. But when you send that text, you're going to get a text back that brings you to a link so that you can go and make a donation on our website. And so tonight I'm going to ask that every person in this room would consider making a donation. Maybe it's $5, maybe it's $5,000. I don't know what your capacity to give is, but you do and the Holy Spirit does. And tonight, I want us to take a few minutes. The band is going to lead us in a couple of songs. And while they do, I want you to pray, spend some time seeking the Father on what can you do tonight to make an impact on the 30,000 kids in our community. But more importantly, what can you do to make an impact on one kid in our community, on Zariah, on Devin, on any kid that you picture walking down the street? What can you do tonight to help us reach more of those kids in our community? there's nothing sweeter than your spirit. God, there's nothing better than being in your presence. God, there's nothing, absolutely nothing that's better than you. God, thank you for tonight. God, thank you for all that you're doing in each of our lives. God, thank you for the gifts that we're given tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, it's Phil again. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it blessed you. If you'd like to give, you can text into that number, just like it said just a few minutes ago. Uh, or you can go to our website, westsoundyfc.org, and uh, learn more about what we're doing. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Have a great day.